The next session that we are going to move into will be a panel discussion from a very wide range, a very interesting range of presenters. To facilitate the panel discussion, we will have Rochelle Cameron from Flow, VP of Legal and Regulatory Jamaica, Cayman, Trinidad and Tobago. Please make your way forward and I'm going to invite our panelists as well to come to the stage and have a seat. Uh, starting with Dr. Uh, where am I? Okay. Starting with Dr. Hopelin Hines. We also have on this panel Dr. Carvel McCleary, Dr. Sophia Morgan, and Dr. Clement Branch. And there's an observation I've made. I have not said it, but it's on your, your magazine that our primary, our, our main sponsor is the University of the West Indies, uh, supported by the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, and Agriculture and Fisheries. But I think there is a little thing going on because all of these distinguished presenters are all graduates of the University of the West Indies also. <laughs> and, and I must also claim that I'm a part of that crew <laughs> as well. So we have everyone here. And that, just to give you a a quick overview. You have it in your magazines, but Dr. Hopelin Hines is the Director of Total Rewards and Evaluations with Scotiabank Group in Jamaica Limited. She also uh, did her, has her doctorate in philosophy in organizational behavior, which she also got from the University of West Indies. And the focal point of her studies was examining the influence of leadership engagement on employee engagement and performance in an organizational setting. So she has great background for this conference. We have also Dr. Carvel Newton McCleary, who is Senior Director of HRM and A at Airports Authority of Jamaica. And Dr. McCleary also got his PhD from the University of West Indies and he has spent most of his career in HR and also has a very strong entrepreneurial spirit, a fascination with the aviation business. That is very interesting and is a student of strat strategy as well I'm noticing here. Dr. Sophia Morgan actually taught me at university, she probably don't remember. <laughs> yes, but yes, I did, uh, I think, one or two, one or two courses with you. Uh, she is a lecturer at the UA still and an organizational consultant who studied at university and still also lectures there. Dr. Morgan's mission is to motivate and inspire her students to become the best versions of themselves. And I can confess that is true. She's always had that spirit. Uh, Dr. Clement Branch is a stalwart in sociology and social and the social um, sector section of academia. He's a, the coordinator of human resource development of the graduate programs at the University of West Indies Mona and his work is prolific. He's a avid publisher and speaker and various forum in Jamaica. So now please I hand over to Rochelle. Good morning, all. Morning, all. <laughs> At least make we be engaged. <laughs> so morning, everybody. Um, it is so fantastic to see so many people out here today. I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces. Hi, Naomi. Hi, Renee. <laughs> a lot of familiar faces as we're here to discuss such an important topic for us here in Jamaica, employee engagement. I too am a graduate of the University of the West Indies, so we should probably have that hashtag too, hashtag all away we go UA. <laughs> so we've heard some introductions for our speakers this morning and we're actually going to jump into the presentation. You know, this particular era we're looking at the nuances of employee engagement and productivity in Jamaica and not just some ordinary research findings but some groundbreaking research findings and we really have an amazing group of presenters this morning and um, the order of the presentations we will actually start with Mr. Clement Branch and then we will have Miss Morgan 
And we'll move into Dr. McCleary and then Dr. Hines. From some of the earlier questions that were rather searching, we know that the research will certainly be questioned and we'll have some vigorous debate. We'll hopefully have the debate using um, the technology, but if not, thank God for ordinary little mics. So ladies and gentlemen, let us at this time welcome Mr. Clement Branch, Coordinator HRD Graduate Programs Unit of the University of the West Indies. Good morning, everyone. It's goodish to be here. <laughs> I have 10 minutes, and we are going to go through fairly quickly. My title is Plantation, Transgression, and Displacement, a Caribbean Organizational Imaginary. And this is a paper that I am presenting, but there are really two authors, myself and uh, Olivine Thomas. I'm going to start with two quotations, one about the past and one about the present. First, the quotation about the past. In the Caribbean, the European imperial en enterprise ensured that the worst features of colonialism throughout the globe would all be combined in the region. The virtual annihilation of the native population, the plundering and internecine piracy among the European powers, the deracination and atrocities of the slave trade and plantation slavery, and the subsequent system of indenture which stranded Chinese and Indians in the Caribbean when the return clauses of indenture contracts were dishonored. So that is the history, that is the past. The next quotation is about the present. And it is from a young St. Lucian poet, Vladimir Lucian. And the quotation, it never ends People slide easily into stretchers every day, belly laugh their way out of breath, lives wrapped in a, a roti of death. What we're trying to do is to connect the past to the present. And we are trying to place the question of engagement within the context of Caribbean history. You will see from what follows, that is from the panelists, that we think of organizational engagement and productivity in the broadest of terms, terms that require a radical reordering of relations of power within the individual psyche and outside of the, of the individual, both within organizations and outside of organization. The Department of Sociology, Psychology, and Social Work at MONA has produced in the last half dozen years a number of PhD theses focusing on the dynamics of Jamaican Caribbean organizations. These have studied defensiveness, engagement, trust, and identity. From these different studies, there are three points to be made. One, all the phenomena studied are interrelated. They overlap and they are mutually interactive. Two, they all are suggestive of substantial structural embeddedness that require transformation, but at the same time, that make transformation difficult. 
Thirdly, all of these studies are part of a larger project that places the study of Caribbean and Caribbean organization within a post-colonial framework. Just to orient the audience, we will give two suggestions as to what a post-colonial framework is about. One, it has been suggested that it is more helpful to think of post-colonialism, not just as coming literally after colonialism and signifying its demise, but more flexibly as the contestation of colonial domination and the legacies of colonialism. The second suggestion is that the post-colonials signify not as much subjectivity after the colonial experience as a subjectivity of oppositionality to imperializing, colonializing, red, subordinating, subjectivizing discourses and practices. So that's the the general framework in which our study of organizations and engagement and related phenomena takes place. In the reality of Caribbean social structure from the establishment of plantation society to the present, the phenomenon of transgression has been fundamental. We define transgression in the following terms. One, transgression is a liminal strategy of contestation, of appropriation, subversion, and transformation in a context of domination and inequality. Two, transgression is an oppositional process, structure, location, or attitude established in relations of domination, exclusion, and felt denial. The plantation has been used to describe our reality. We talk about plantation society. But the plantation is a historical reality and a metaphor. But it's a metaphor that we still live by in many organizational and everyday contexts today. Organizational transformation has been slow and limited, but in understanding that, we must remember that the new world plantations involve an alignment of an organizational form and ethic with the logic, rational, technical, and cultural of modern imperialism, colonialism, and capitalism. All attempts at social and organizational Transformation, therefore, have to take account of ongoing transgressive structures against a continually consolidating and interlocking system of power relations at many psychosociocultural levels. The, the Caribbean has produced, I'm looking for I don't see anybody waving any numbers at me, so I will proceed. <laughs> yeah, but you see, the, that waving at the back presume that I'm not half blind, but I'm nearsighted. Okay, quickly, they. The Caribbean, given all that I've said that is part of context, the Caribbean has produced a number of important scholars who have reacted to that history. And we want to mention quickly just two of them, Franz Fanon and Wilson Harris. 
and Fanon sees the colonial relationship as established in the Caribbean psyche, an existential deviation or zone of non-being, while Wilson Harris sees the trauma of colonialism to be read on the model of the voiding by consciousness and the transformation of the post-colonial ego as a precondition for post-colonial reconstruction. We wanted to combine our scholars, that is Fanon and Wilson Harris, with the, the work of Jack Lacan. And we wanted to do that because what Fanon and what Fanon and Wilson Harris is saying is that one outcome, one transgressive outcome of the tensionful conditions of and the displacement of the continuing, continually unfolding colonial situation is the paradox of a sense of inferiority and limitation alongside a rigid or extreme ego institutionalization that gives rise to the illusions of self-sufficiency and self-completion. And the work of Lacan takes this up in a more universal sense and also offers some indication of how we might overcome our situation. Lacan talks about three orders of the real, the imaginary, and the symbolic, and how they work together to create the tensions of our psychosociocultural selves. He also offers a promise of functional, the functionally realizable, in which we can reinscribe the deficiencies through which the imaginary arises as a productive relationship with a non-alienative symbolic order. What we are suggesting, quickly, I got it. She, <laughs> she comes closer with the time up, so there's no escape. What we are suggesting, finally, is that we should see organizations in this, this imaginary sense as an exilic space, a place in which people can escape from the noisy sphere. But it must be an exilic space in which we attempt to integrate our fragments, to move from negativity to positivity without defensive compensatory mechanisms. Let us experiment with creating an organizational environment in which a bounded emotionality focuses on categorical respect and on a language and practice that moves beyond the post-colonial moment to a real fullness of engagement and productivity. Thank you. Another round of applause for Mr. Clement Branch, um, who really got us to think about the present, the effect of our past on our present. We really look forward to seeing that paper uploaded on the JBDC website, because I know it will take quite a bit of study. Very useful information.